Namaste everyone, this is Ambi. Today let's talk about Python functions, uh, especially functions arguments, uh, keyword arguments, and also a bit of uh, recursion maybe, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and put it out for you here. Yeah, this is what's gonna be our topic today. Mm, markdown. Okay, then rename. Hmm, okay. So let me put two star here and three star so that it takes. Okay, I think it will neglect them. Anyway, so yeah. I hope the font is big enough for all to see. A regular syntax of a function is this define and then you have function name arguments then you have code let me make it raw no, not marked down raw okay so first let's look at functions with no arguments yeah let's define a function define hello so a function always starts with define def that means it's going to be a function function name and parenthesis colon return hello yep If I just type hello here, what happens is returns the function itself. If I do hello like this, then it will run the function instead of returning the function. And I do like this. Is it acceptable? Let's see. Yep, that works too, right? Then let's talk about functions with predefined number of arguments. Go to code here, mark down, shift enter. Then go to define square. And I'm going to give an argument called n. It should do return n star n, right? So square two is two because two into two two multiplied by itself is two then we will do square of five that is 25 square of three okay square of three is nine square of three is gonna fail because the data type what we have given is a string and you can't multiply a string by itself. Get that type of string, it will fail. You can't multiply string by itself. That's not supported, right? So then let's talk about functions with predefined Okay, so we talked about predefined. Like, let's start a few more examples here. Let's talk, uh, let's define add x comma y. Earlier we had one argument, now we have two arguments. And I'm going to do return x plus y. Okay, so add three comma four, add one comma two, that works. Let's define another function, define subtract x comma y, it returns x minus y. Three minus five is two. Then we have subtract 13 minus five is eight. Basic mathematics, no big deal there. Let's talk about functions 
with unlimited arguments or should I say functions with a sequence uh, sequence of arguments right so anything which is iterable are functions with then iterable as an arguments are functions with iterable arguments I think that is better uh, iterable mm -hmm. let's take it unlimited here and this is going to be clear so anything that you can iterate and you want to pass that as an argument to a function then this is how you do it let's say we have define adder a star args so if you are passing a sequence to a function as an argument you always prefix that with a single star total equals a for arg in args total equals total plus arg and then return total right so let's say adder one comma two comma three there you go adder one two three four five six adder star range zero to nine yep and then adder star range five just four not zero to four i'm just giving four because automatically it will assume that it's from zero okay so one plus two plus three plus four how much is it yep let's count with one plus two plus three plus four is ten so when i say range four it actually means three right that's where it is because it is not from zero to four it's zero till four or right, zero until four let's define just this so since I'm passing a list of arguments it's gonna expect a list of arguments I can just say this I don't have to uh, you know give this option that's not necessary So here then I'm gonna say total by default I'm going to assume that sum is equal to zero and for arg in args total equals total plus arg then return total so adder one two three it works adder one two three four five six that works too let's talk about functions functions with unlimited key value arguments so earlier we gave a sequence now we are giving key value arguments are also a dictionary mm. dictionary as arguments key value pairs as arguments yeah escape caps m ca uncap shift enter let me do this all right so that looks neat or neater let's start take small ones here yeah? print out i'm just going to print out the args and quarks keyword arguments kw stands for keyword arguments and they will be prefixed with double star so that python will know that you are passing a keyword argument so you don't have to say arg in args you can say anything for i in args okay i'm gonna say for i in args itself i will say print i and then for key value in i don't have to say key value i can also say kv but for better understanding this is how it will say so if you remember our discussion in dictionary this is how you access all the elements in our dictionary key 
dictionary dot items parenthesis yeah so print key value so I defined a function here then I will do print out um, justice league jl batman bruce superman clark so here i gave keyword arguments these are key value pair this is a keyword or key and word or key value and this is just a list of arguments this is one argument this is one argument right so let's do it a bit neatly right sq i'm going to define these values here yep so we have a square root a sq this is a dictionary contains key value pair key is one integer value is its square square of 2 is 4, square of 3 is 9, square of 4 is 16, square of 5 is 25. Then we have another dictionary that is num. Here it's an integer enclosed in quotes, so string, and this is an alphabetic representation of the same. Then we have two lists, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, list 2 is 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so if I just do print out ls1 right what it does is it will be treated as just one argument since we have not okay, without a star prefix what happens we printed out the entire list so what we have to do here is We just have to put this star, then Python will know that we are passing a sequence and it will take a sequence. It doesn't have to be a list. I can also do tu. As you can see, it's a tuple. Let's see whether it works with the tuple. The, will it work yes it will because that is a sequence too that is an iterator too then we will do print out star ls2 write 7 8 9 10 then print out star ls1 star ls2 it won't because i missed a comma there you go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 might it printed both of them now let's print out the keyword argument first let's take num yeah num so key value it printed out key value however if we do sq we will have a problem that is it says print out keywords must be strings okay key words must be strings that's what kw means key words we can combine them star ls1 star ls2 double star num here you go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 5 5 6 6 right so what is the syntax then so this is the syntax bra define function then you have argument arguments keyword arguments let's talk about interesting topic interesting function rather it's called recursion mark down recursion here recursion is the process of defining something in terms of itself let me just do this paste my notes here 
So recursion is a process of defining something in terms of itself. Imagine two mirrors facing each other, both of them endlessly, recursively produce each other's image in itself. Like a mirror is facing each other, put in parallel, right? So let's define a problem here. Yeah? Let's take a which problem? Okay. Let's take this example. Write a function which C A L C U calculates the factorial of a given number, yeah. Factorial of a number is the product of all the integers integer from 1 to that number we will see what it is so define factorial n while n not equal to 1 return n factorial n minus 1 this function is calling itself here else return 1 if the given value is not 1, it's going to do this. So enter factorial 2. Factorial 1. Right. 2 into 1 is 2. 1 into 1 is 1. Factorial 3. 3 into 2 into 1 is 6. Factorial 4, 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, 24. Factorial 5, 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, 120. As you can see, if you don't believe me, 3, 4, 5, here you go, 120. So in short, What is recursion? Any function which calls itself recursively, but is repeatedly or endlessly, till it has attained a solution, is a recursive function. So let's uh, rewrite that using if statement. Using if instead of while, that is define factorial two, I'm gonna name it two, if n equals one, return 1 else return n star factorial 2 n minus 1 what did i say here let me take this one post it here did I miss something here? Okay, I should say n, not 2. Makes sense. Then I will say factorial 2, 5 is 120. Same as here, factorial 5 is 120, factorial that is 120. You can do the same thing with uh, uh, just like, you know, for loop, while loop where uh, you can do n, you can set n and keep on subtracting that, but that's a whole uh, different topic. Probably I should have covered that in f loops. So I think that's all I had for functions. There are many other aspects to functions, like lambda functions and others, and how you use them in object-oriented programming. Let's say you have a huge, big task which has some 20 subtasks. So what you do is you write a separate function for each 20 subtasks and collectively call those functions from uh, a one big function. So what that will do, that will help you 
in uh, you know debugging or some way it will give you better readability or if you pass on your project to someone else it will be easier for them to understand also many different people can work on one piece of code they can test take a subtask they can only work on it and if at all you have to change something you can change only that part of the code only that particular subtask you don't have to touch the entire code uh, i think i have one more uh, nested functions fun one n return n star 2 okay so define a function let me define one more function function 2 i will take some list yeah then i will do for i in some list print function 1 i function calling another function this is nested functions right okay i'm gonna say i'm not even, i'm not even gonna say nested function just functions calling other functions right so let's uh, define ls1 is one two three four five fun two is ls1 what did it do I'm calling function 2 I'm passing ls1 a list and that one is calling function 1 to perform some activity right so this is how the same thing scaled up to the highest degree is called object oriented programming we will look at that later so thank you for tuning in have a great one you take care now